y'all, Natalie here today for a cherry on top, and I am doing a technique Tuesday, and this month we're focusing on distress techniques. So I'm going to talk about distressing paper today, and I am using some Pink Fresh Studio. Now, Pink Fresh Studio is very crisp and white, and so I love to distress the crisp and white papers as like a nice juxtaposition between crisp and nice and distress and altered. Um, you'll see what I mean later, but I have those photos there of my husband and my boys, and um, I kind of already distressed them per se um, when I edited them. I added a little bit of a pink filter on them because I thought that would help them go well with the collection because um, they were on a black trampoline and there was a really bright grass green in the background. So um, editing your pictures is one way that you can make them fit really well with the collection that you're working with. So I just trimmed down this paper from keeping it real and I'm gonna put it on a white background. But first, I'm gonna run it through this paper distressor. There are, these are available in the store and they have different levels of blades in them. And as you can see, it made this really fabulous distressed edge. And so the core of the paper is white, so it shows a little bit of white, but also it doesn't ruin your scissors, makes them dull by, so you can save your scissors from not doing that, but also um, no chance of cutting yourself either. So I kind of was going with that layout that you saw there, two above and two below. So in between, I wanted to put some paper to kind of um, anchor my title and my journaling. So I had this idea to take some colored cardstock and run it through or run my kind of scoring tool on a scoreboard cutting board. Mo a lot of, not most, but a lot of paper cutters and paper trimmers have these score lines as well. And I thought it would just be a really fun way to add texture to the layout. So um, I have a mm, seafoam green color and then I have this pink color and it already was ripped off on the edge and so I'm gonna kind of keep that because it goes with the distressed paper look. And I would say that adding this texture is another way of distressing paper. It's almost like embossing, or actually this is kind of debossing because I'm pushing the paper down into the cracks. And so, and that's the way that I'm gonna show the paper. So it's kind of debossed. But I thought it gave a really fun texture. It actually looks like <laughs> ribbing on like shirts that were cool when, about when I was in middle school and all that stuff is cool again. So I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> so yeah, I love how that looks. I'm kind of giving you an idea of how the layout's gonna go from here. Um, I'm gonna trim off the ends of those two middle sheets. I'm trying to decide if I want the pink in the middle of the green or the green peeking out of both sides. And I decide to go with the green pe peeking out of both sides. And um, again, I use that awesome distressing tool and I distress the straight edges of both of those colored cardstock pieces. And it just gives everything a nice texture and you can see all the paper crumbs, so I'm knocking them off. Um, that is the technical term, crumbs, paper crumbs. <laughs> So I have this super great stencil from Kaiser Craft. This is one of my favorites. It's very subtle. And so I am using it to distress the background and add more texture. To me, distressing and texture go hand in hand because pretty much when you distress anything, it's gonna give it depth and texture. So I'm adding opaque white texture paste, uh, matte texture paste from Ranger through the stencil, just kind of where the photos are gonna be. Um, it's very subtle because the background paper is a little bit busy, so, but I just wanted to add more of that crisp white onto the layout since there is none yet until I add the ephemera. So there we have how the background is gonna look. I'm going to stick down those um, cardstock pieces. All of my photos are also backed in a crisp white as well. So. I just want to keep that going as a recurring theme throughout the page so it helps things kind of be cohesive. I'm just holding up all the most recent Pink Fresh Puffy Alphas to see which ones I want to use and I go with the ones, I think those are the ones from Keeping It Real as well. 
and um, my title is gonna be rule maker versus rule breakers because <laughs> obviously their dad is the rule maker and they are the rule breakers and they're all breaking the rules by wrestling of the trampoline that is not allowed but they were making an awful ruckus outside so much so that I had to go out and see what was going on and then I saw that the adult in charge was <laughs> being a child okay so this is the uh, let's, oh, oh I looked it up right before I started doing my voiceover so the um, Someday collection has a Blooms ephemera kit and an Elements ephemera kit. I think I have that right. It has two different ephemera packages. And one is just like um, tags and and word ephemera and shapes. And, the, and then this one is the beautiful florals. It has some uh, foliage and it also has lemons, which I super love. So I'm using both of those here to embellish the page. I'm going to use that little um, kind of exacto knife thing. And I'm just cutting a slit in one of those debossed rows and I'm gonna slide the um, stems of the florals into it as the, so as the, if they were kind of growing out of it. So we decided to go ahead and stick it down so I can stick my florals in. Um, as though they're growing out. I thought that was fun. And um, I, I know, I mean, I am all for using quote pink on a boy page. I don't think pink is a girl color or anything, but I do know some people struggle with that. And so again, this was another way of kind of tinting those photos helped it jive with the florals on the page. I know that seems kind of an odd um, choice to use the florals here, but hey, they were outside and I don't know, I just liked it. And I'm, it's my scrapbook, right? So I can put florals in it if I want. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just kind of adjusting those florals. I don't want to stick them down because I do want them to kind of pop off of the page. Let's see here, what's next? Oh, so I have that roll of foam tape and I am gonna um, pop the photos up on it because of the different layers and how they're kind of like on the bottom layer and the cardstock layer and so they weren't really setting right because I had distressed the cardstock so much so I thought why don't we just like pop them up and that'll solve all of our problems and what are we doing okay so I was looking for the middle letter so that I can determine how to put my title um but then I didn't really count how many <laughs> words or letters were in each word and it kind of was off center anyway but that's okay um because the page is distressed that's probably why i do so many distressed things on my page i'm not like a super pristine scrapbooker so if it's off kilter or off center okay i'll just like stick something on the left there to balance it out <laughs> it's not uh it's not a deal breaker for me so now I'm just gonna start embellishing around the photos. I don't wanna do too much, but I do wanna add a little bit on each one. So I'm gonna, um, I need more yellow in there. So I'm adding that little loving it tag. I'm gonna add a lemon. Um, and we were at home, so I'm kinda trying to find the elements of, some elements are gonna be um, focused on home and that is in this Sunday's kit. As you can see over there on the left, I also have the cardstock stickers. I think I do add a few of those as well. It all just goes so beautifully together. I love it. Yeah, that one that one that I just put down said home sweet home. And I layer up some foliage with a lemon down here because I need another pop of yellow down there. Um, I think about putting that at the top, but I do not. I like to tuck and layer everything, kind of touching something else so that it all looks as though it was well thought out and cohesive. So I have this white piece and to balance it out, I'm gonna put another bright white piece down on the left-hand corner. So kind of they're separated equally, I guess is the right word. Um, and I just stick that directly onto the photo. So it is kind of like off of the page since I put that foam behind the photo. Um, 
Um, this is going up on the Cherry on Top YouTube channel, so make sure you like and subscribe. I, uh, I'm sure that there's also a link down below to the store. This collection is still in stock, so run and grab it because it's gorgeous and very versatile. Like I said, I used it here on this layout of my boys wrestling. <laughs> and then I also just made another page today that's gonna be up later this week on my channel. Um, that was very girly and florally um, of a girl's night out of us standing in front of a wall of flowers. So it is super versatile, super beautiful, great for summer or spring. I just felt like I needed to bring a little bit of that lemon up to the top to kind of give us something to start with like your eye and then work your way down as though you're reading a book and I love how many labels and um, I really love the um, different kind of unique wording that pink fresh studio does I'm a big fan of pink fresh um, their slogans and phrases are sometimes pretty unique So I am going to finish this page out with the Pink Fresh Studio Essential Gems because, you know, what page doesn't need gems, even if it's about wrestling? <laughs> and I also am going to use my white gel pen to add journaling there in the middle on the coral paper. Um, it again, will just add some of that pop of bright white that is so unique to not unique but uh pink fresh is all bright white so i don't know the right word i'm thinking of but um it definitely will give a nod to the rest of the collection and help it be really cohesive just trying to find a place for this little sprig here i felt like i needed a little more greenery and there's its home so we're gonna stick that in there and off camera, I do add the journaling, but it is off camera. And thank you guys for watching. There you can see the final product with the journaling and, oh, you know what? I don't think I added jewels this time. I lied to you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I do on most of my layouts. So anyway, uh, the links down below will get you to the store and let you buy all this gorgeous Pink Fresh Studio product. And let me know if you have any more questions about texture. Um, this was a fun technique Tuesday. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye y'all.